Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I am Pastor Lexi Johnson. You're tuned into the Kingdom Disciples Training Center. And um, if faith is the official language of the kingdom, then a lack of faith renders us spiritually mute. In other words, we're unable to communicate effectively within the kingdom. So are we, as kingdom citizens, fluent in the language of faith or are we lost in translation? Hey, once again, welcome to our weekly Sabbath teaching here at Kingdom Disciples Training Center. We are so excited uh, that you have decided to join us. This is our um, weekly Bible study where we uh, do a deep dive for an hour. So as deep as we can go for an hour, right, into um, various topics in the Bible, various st stories, cir circumstances, all of that. Um, in the Bible. And we're doing this because we want to become more effective disciples. That's right. We're here. We don't want you to just take this information, right? Sit on it. We want you to meditate on it, but then we want you to act on it. And we want you to get out there and do what God has called you to do. Well, today um, I want to share with you just a couple of announcements really quickly. Um, in the description, you're going to see a link um, for a women's retreat called the P3 Retreat, P3 Emerge Retreat. Um, this is hosted by none other than the awesome Erica Etienne. And um, every retreat that I have gone to um, has been um, refreshing. It has been renewing. It has taken me higher and higher in the Lord. And so I am encouraging all women who are listening to check it out, um, you will find the link in the description and all of the information that you need to know. It is in um, November, I believe it's the weekend of the 14th, um, but I want you to, you know, to go check it out. And then um, it was something else that I wanted to share with you. Oh, this weekend, um, last night, I went to see um, The Forge. What an amazing movie. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it, but I highly encourage you all to get out and see it um, for two reasons. Uh, Faith-based, uh, kingdom citizen-based media needs our support, right? If we don't get out there and support it, the, then we can't expect to have more content like that, to have more films, more docu-series, more documentaries, more short films, whatever. We can't expect to have more of it. So get out there, go and support the movie, right? Second, it is a movie with excellent themes and excellent lessons. And it will, you will walk away from it um, inspired and also thinking like, okay, what can I do, right? In my own uh, sphere of influence to disciple others. And so I'm going to encourage you all to go out and to, and, and to see The Forge, okay? It's de debuted this weekend, debuted last night. So get out there, go see it, go support it. All right. Today, um, our scripture, our main scripture is coming from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it reads, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. The title of our study today is Lost in Translation. This is part two. When faithlessness renders you mute. Lost in translation when faithlessness renders you 
mute. So I hope that you have your Bibles. I hope that you have your notebooks. I hope you have your favorite writing utensil. It could be a pencil, could be a pen, could be a marker, could be a, 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 a colored pencil, could be a Crayola crayon. I don't care what it is, right? Whatever your favorite utensil is, I hope you have it. I hope you have your favorite healthy beverage. I just, it's water. And um, let's get ready to dive into this word. Uh, let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. We thank you for allowing us to see another beautiful Sabbath day, oh Lord. We thank you, Father God, um, for um, your word, Father God, for faith cometh by hearing the word of God, right? And so we thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to get in our word and to hear from you today. May your word, um, may we receive it so that it does what it always does, which is transform our lives. This is our prayer. In the name of Yahushua, we pray. Amen. All right. Listen, let us know who you are, where you are watching from. We um, always love to, you know, shout out people if we can. And um, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and to share this broadcast. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. Okay. Share this broadcast. Um, I'm pulling it up on my phone. This way I can catch um, comments that I may not be able to catch through this platform, maybe. And uh, let's get into it. All right. So every kingdom has an official language. All right. It is a huge part of what makes a kingdom. And this language represents that kingdom's culture. It represents that kingdom's values. It represents that kingdom's belief, beliefs. And in the kingdom of God, it isn't any different, right? But that language in the kingdom of God, contrary to what most are always talking about when we start talking about languages, you know, in the kingdom of God, we either are talking about, you know, tongues or um, whether they're real languages or whether, you know, a prayer language or both or this or that. And, you know, I've done some um, studies on that. So we're not getting into that at all. In fact, there is a scripture. Uh, and I'll have to find the exact uh, uh, location of where it is. But Paul talks about, you know, that these things that these things we keep debating about, you know, that stuff is milk. And when are we going to move beyond the milk? <laughs> right and get to um, the meat of things. And so that's not the discussion that we're having here today. So if you thought that that's, that this is what this is, okay, it is not. But in the kingdom of God, the language is faith, okay? Now, I titled this again, Lost in Translation with Faithlessness Renders You Mute. And I proposed a question at the beginning of this. And I said, are we as kingdom citizens fluent in the language of faith? Or are we lost in translation? And see, when you're lost in translation, when you are unable to communicate, that is a form of being muted, right? Now, the Hebrew word for mute is um, ilem. I think I pronounced it right. Don't quote me on that. But the meaning is that someone who is unable to speak or is speechless, the Greek word is kophos. Leva said that right, not sure. I really need to check these uh, phonetic pronunciations before I come on here, right? Which can refer to someone who is both deaf and mute or unable to hear or speak. So I want you to keep that in mind as we progress today. And um, I want to go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. So turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, whether you have your physical Bible or you have your digital Bible, either way. Again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. All right. So many places in the Bible talk about faith. Um, faith is the currency. 
It is the language. Um, it is the expression of life in the kingdom of God. It transcends spoken language and dialect. Okay. Some people think, oh, because we are, you know, of different kingdoms, earthly kingdoms now I'm speaking of, and we don't speak the same languages that there is, there can be a barrier between kingdom citizens. But I'm here to tell you that faith transcends even spoken language and cultural barriers. It is a universal language. So no matter what language you speak, faith is universal. It is the key to accessing and operating in the kingdom, period. Okay, now, are there areas in your life, are there areas in my life where we are truly spiritually muted because our faith is lacking? And as we progress through the study today, you're going to come to see how these things are related, right? May not, we may not have thought about this before. But my other question is, can we truly call ourselves kingdom citizens if we are not fluent in the language of faith? If faith is the language of the kingdom, yet we are speaking any and everything else, can you call yourself a kingdom citizen? Because language is a hugely important part of a kingdom. So now let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. And let me get my Bible over here. Sometimes I be having the scriptures written out in front of me and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, I'm sorry. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Okay. My eyes be deceiving me. All right, it says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart, right? So there's belief and then a step above belief is faith, right? So you first must believe that it's going to happen. Um, but then you must have faith. Okay. You must have faith. Faith in who or what? Faith in Yahusha. Okay. Not faith in ourselves, but faith in Yahusha that it can happen. Right. See, our words are a reflection of our faith or the lack thereof. Again, when we are just you know, in the natural, in our, in, you know, we can tell by the language someone speaks, we can tell that they may not be from here, um, that they are from another kingdom. We can even tell by the dialect that you speak, because you may even be in the same kingdom, okay, United States, we live in the, in the same uh, country, but we may even have different dialects based on what region you live in in the United States, right? Same in other countries. If you go to Ghana, they have an you know official language, uh, which is English, by the way. <laughs> but then they have other dialects. Depending on where you're from in Ghana, you're going to speak a certain dialect, right? Good afternoon, Intercessor Mills. Good to see you. Thank you for watching all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. So when people speak. Typically, right off the bat, we can tell if a person is where we're from or they're from somewhere else, right? Like I said, whether it's regional or whether it's another country or, and we may not even be able to even identify the specific country or kingdom that they're from, but we know they're not from here, right? And so that's the same for kingdom citizens. And I feel like, I don't feel like, I know that we have an issue in this world, um, because people, when they listen to us, 
can't tell that we are kingdom citizens, right? When we speak, we either are affirming our faith in God or we are revealing our doubts. Every word that comes out of your mouth, every sentence that comes out of your mouth, when you speak it, you are either affirming your faith in God or you are revealing your doubts. See, if your words do not align with um, faith, then you really are effectively mute in the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. If your words do not align with faith, you are effectively mute in the kingdom of God. Now, there is another uh, definition, Hebrew definition of the word mute, and that is bound. I need us to, I'm pausing because I need us to sit with the weight of that. If our words do not align with faith, then we are effectively mute in the kingdom. We are effectively bound. We are not able to communicate because faith is the language. Faith is the currency. It is the expression of life in the kingdom of God. And so if you are not speaking from a place of faith, you cannot be understood. In fact, the Bible says, Hebrews 11, 6, this is our main scripture, that it is impossible to please God without what? Without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So if you are lacking in faith, and it is reflected in your speech, you are effectively mute in the kingdom, the kingdom of God. That means that whatever you're speaking, that's for another kingdom, all right? And we know in the spiritual realm, there are only two kingdoms. And what are those kingdoms? There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. That's it. It's not like in the natural where, you know, again, you have the United States and the different regions and you've got Ghana and you've got Nigeria and you've got Kenya, you've got Benin, you've got um, Britain, you've got Australia, you got, you know, it's not like that. In the spiritual realm, there are only two kingdoms. And so you're either speaking the language of the kingdom of God or you are speaking the language of the kingdom of Satan. And so what we're learning here is that if our words do not align with faith, then we are mute in the kingdom of God, but we can be understood in the kingdom of Satan. Turn with me to uh, Luke chapter one, Luke chapter one, verses 18 to 20, Luke chapter one, verse 18 to 20. All right, and if y'all are coming into the room, say hello. Let me know you're here, okay? Say hello. Sometimes I can see, um, you know, your names, and sometimes it does not. All right, so Luke chapter 1, and we are going to read verses 18 to 20. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. And my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. 
I titled this when your faithlessness renders you mute. I'm trying to express to you and share to you, share with you that if we are not speaking the language of faith, we are effectively muted in the kingdom of God. So this is Zechariah. He is the father of John the Baptist, right? And uh, his son, okay, Zechariah, he's being foretold about the birth of his son. Now, uh, Zechariah, okay, is like, how is this supposed to happen? Because I am an old, old man which tells me that he forgot about his forefather, Abraham, right? And what God can do because God and, his, and what he has the ability to do because he is sovereign, he transcends all our little earthly biological clocks and worldly, you know, uh, limitations, right? So Zachariah doesn't, he, he doesn't have any faith, okay? This is an angel talking to him. Listen, sometimes we think that, oh, if it's an angel that says something to me, I would have listened, right? Listen, a lot of us, God himself could say some things to us. We know it's him talking and we'll respond like Zachariah. No faith. No faith. And when you live in a kingdom where the official language is faith and you're not speaking that language, nobody in that kingdom can understand you. If you leave this country and you go, um, I don't know, go to Honduras, right? They all speak Spanish. And you go and you're speaking English and you are a, you are making the assumption that people or, or, or you're just arrogant about it. And you think people should understand you because you, I'm going to speak my language and you should understand me. Mm -mm. God says it's not how it works in the kingdom of God. If you say you are part of the kingdom of God, then you're going to speak the language of the kingdom. So Zechariah is rendered mute. He has become, uh, his communication everything is, is, is useless in the kingdom. He was struck mute because of his lack of faith in the angel's message, okay? His wife, Elizabeth, was going to bear a son. His doubt rendered him unable to speak. Now, this symbolizes how a lack of faith can silence our voice in the kingdom. Think about that. Where is your faith lacking? Because in the place where your faith is lacking, the enemy has silenced you. In the place where your faith is lacking, the enemy has silenced you. Right? Yes, intercessor, you speak the language of the Lord's kingdom. If that's the kingdom you live in, you can't come in there uh, speaking your own language and demanding everybody to understand you. <laughs> that's selfish, that's prideful, that all, that's arrogant, that's all of that, and all of that belongs in the kingdom of Satan. Now, contrast, I mentioned Abraham, contrast um, Zechariah with Abraham. So unlike Zechariah, Abraham did not waver in his faith despite the impossibility of the situation. Okay. Actually, I don't want to say he didn't, he didn't, he didn't waver, but he didn't sit in that wavering, right? Because they did kind of waver. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't Abraham. It was Sarah. Let me put it that way. So but Romans 4, 19 to 21 says that Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb, right? But Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. 
And that's the way that we, we must be. See, we can say that, oh yeah, I have faith. Oh yeah, I'm fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises, right? We can say that in the appropriate settings. If we are around some believers or we are in you know, a worship service or we are because it is the right thing to say. But are you truly convinced? Because every word that comes out of your mouth, everything that you say on a daily basis will truly tell someone whether or not you are fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises, right? So while Zechariah's doubt muted him, Abraham's unwavering faith empowered him to speak and live in alignment with God's promises. So this contrast emphasizes the power of faithful speech in the kingdom and the danger of allowing doubt to silence us. Some of you, you're not sharing your testimony. You're worried about who might think what, or, you know, I don't know if people are gonna un understand what I'm saying, or people don't wanna hear from me, or whatever excuse that has been made, you are allowing doubt to silence you and you are being rendered ineffective and mute in the kingdom of God. How many of us as kingdom citizens are experiencing lack because our words betray a lack of faith or our words portray a lack of faith? Think about it. Think about the areas that you may be lacking in. What are the words that you are speaking with regard to that area? We must reflect on our daily speech, right? We must ask ourselves, do our, line, do our words align with faith in God's promises or do they reveal underlying doubt? You know what I've been saying to myself um, for these for a, lot, for a few months now is I just want to speak this. God gave us this. This is this, this, we can find the language of the kingdom in here. We just need to learn it and repeat it, right? It's like going to um, uh, a, a foreign language class. Most of them, when we were in school, when we were young, you had a foreign language class. It was required then. I don't know if it's still required now or not but you had a foreign language class, right? So they would give you this book and, you know, so and, and, and teach you the language, show you, uh, show you the language. You learn how to read it. You learn how to speak it. And then if you were really blessed, you were immersed in a community, whether it was the classroom or somewhere else, you were immersed in that community so that you could learn to speak that language. So we must immerse ourselves in the language of faith, which is the word of God. And when we speak, we speak according to this. When we pray, we pray the scriptures, right? Speak the scriptures, pray the scriptures, all of that, right? What is our daily speech, daily speech reflecting? What is it reflecting? And I'm not saying that you got to walk around all day long, like verbatim quoting verses, right? I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, but whatever you are saying, is it in alignment with these verses? Is it in alignment with the scriptures? Before things come out of your mouth, is it in alignment with the scripture? Okay, so what you say, your speech is an expression of faith. Now, also what is an expression of faith are your actions. Your actions are also an expression of faith. So let's go over to James, James chapter two. By the way, y'all, James happens to be one of my favorite books. One of them, Genesis, Hebrews, James, <laughs> this is my favorite book, Revelation. All right, before I name all of them, right? 
So James chapter two. James chapter two, we're going to read verse 26. James chapter two, verse 26. It reads, I'm, again, I'm reading from the New Living, New Living Translation. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. Listen, you don't have any breath, you know, moving, moving through your body, in and out your body. That means you're dead, okay? And where it says it is that faith is that same way, that faith is dead without good works, okay? So you can maybe express, you can have the speech, okay, that is in alignment with faith, but now your actions have to line up with that too. Faith must also be demonstrated through your actions, not just your words. So without the corresponding actions, your faith is dead. And we are, again, rendered spiritually mute. you unable to fully communicate the reality of your faith. This is why so many people in this world have an issue with kingdom citizens. Because too many of us have the speech and no action. Have actions and no speech, right? You got to have both. You must have both. Or you will not be able to effectively communicate. Listen, not just with people who are not yet in the kingdom of God, but you can't also you cannot also you can also not communicate with other people, with other kingdom citizens. Because other kingdom citizens who are speaking in alignment with the word of God and who are living in alignment of the word of God, y'all not going to be able to communicate either. I have decided, I'm like, if you cannot speak the word around me, you cannot speak faith. If you cannot, if your actions are not faith, we can't, we have a barrier. Are there some of us as kingdom citizens in the in uh, today's society who we claim to speak the language of faith, but we're functionally mute? Okay, because our actions are not lining up. Our actions don't reflect our profession of faith. There is a mismatch. There is an inconsistency. There is incongruency between our words and between our actions. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice, I'm going back to Abraham, but in Genesis chapter 22, 1 through 14, we won't have time here, but I want you to write it down so you can read it later. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son was a demonstration of his faith. He was not merely speaking faith, right? He was not merely, you know, saying, oh Lord, whatever you would have me to do, whatever you would have me to do, but then his actions doing something else. He was willing to sacrifice his son. Now we praise God it didn't come to that, right? And God would not have let it come to that. But he was being tested as to, does he really mean what he says? And we are tested. There are situations and circumstances that come about in our lives that test us. And will show us if we are truly in alignment with what we're saying. Because we're really good at saying all the right things, right? We're really good at saying all the right things. But when it comes time to back it up with action, a whole lot of us are missing in action, right? The woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. Verse 25 to 34. Let's go there. Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. Mark 
chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. All right. A woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. First of all, 12 years. That's a long time. Any woman listening to me right now, 12 years for some of us, okay, who have had the experience of having menstrual cycles. L listen, when I had one, I was on the shorter end, right? Like Mine would be somewhere between three to five days. And I didn't even want that around for that amount of time. Okay. There's some women who went seven days, right? They were like the full entire week, right? But it's not something convenient. This lady, 12 years, she suffered with this constant bleeding. Verse 26 says she had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about a man <laughs> named Yahusha. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Okay, so she thought it. And then it became an action. Verse 29 says, and immediately, immediately the bleeding stopped. Listen, some of us have been going through some things for 12 years or one year or five years or 50 years or 35 years or whatever it may be. But we have been going through that. This is not in everybody's case, but some of us, we have been going through that because we have not demonstrated our faith. You, you talk about it, but there's no action behind it. Let me see if I can give an example. Mm. The Lord, hmm. uh, you know, when y'all know, if you know me outside of this, you know that I, I teach on finances. So these, these examples come to me really, really quickly. And I, I, I've, I've had a situation where I was like, okay, Lord, I'm in, uh, how can I increase in this area? And the Lord is saying, look, faith is the currency. Faith is the currency. Now, listen, if you ask the Lord a question, he will answer you. You need to sit and wait for the answer, though, because some of us ask the question and we keep moving because we don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> right? He will answer you. And then it's up to you to do with that answer what you will. So in a time where I truly needed the income that was coming in, the Lord said, I need you to release some of it. What? What are you talking about? If I release some of it, then I'm not going to be able to pay for X, Y, and Z. What do you mean? I need you to release some of it. Tell, you know, a certain client that, that they don't have to pay you anymore. You'll continue serving them, but they don't have to pay anymore. What? It is so counterintuitive. Sometimes the our demonst the demonstrations of faith can be so counterintuitive. I mean, look at this lady. She's saying in her mind, if I just touch this man's garment, who would think that most people would have thought she was crazy, right? Most people would say, oh, well, maybe go to another doctor, right? Even though she's already been to 25 doctors. I don't know how many, but she's been to several doctors already twelve for over 12 years, back and forth to various different doctors. And we in the world would have told her, well, maybe you didn't go to the right one, right? Maybe go to another one. But in her mind, the spirit tells her, no. Just touch the hem of his garment. That's so crazy. Who? What? This physical issue of you bleeding for 12 years and you need to tell me 
You're just going to touch a man's garment and, and, and then that's it? Well, first of all, it's not any man, right? It is Yahusha, right? So it is not anyone who's just asking me to give up some income so that I can get increased. That just doesn't make any sense. But it's not any man who is asking me to give up income so that I can increase. It is Yahusha who is asking me. He is the one who has the power, who has the ability to move people, places, situations, circumstances, whatever, bring it to your life, however he chooses, right? And so I had to say to myself, if I have the faith that I say that he has, that I have, if I have the faith that I say that I have, that I get here and tell people that I have, and I'm not, and I'm not saying when I say tell people, I'm not always talking about like broadcasting it like this, but you know, we have, have conversations with our friends, with our family, with our this, and you know, we talk about faith and faith, and we have faith and telling other people to have faith. If I say, if I have the faith that I say that I have, then I need to comply with this action. I need to demonstrate and I need to trust, right? Not only believe, but now a step above having faith that Yahusha can do it even as backwards as this sounds. And so I released it. And wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know that the increase came back a little over double? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not even saying that um, because I'm talking about money. I'm not even saying that if you give up money, that is money that you're going to get back. Okay. Don't miss what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that whatever the Lord calls you to do, whatever act of faith, whatever demonstration of faith that he calls you to do, if you are a kingdom citizen, you will do it because you understand that faith is the currency. It is the language that is spoken. If you're trying to acquire um, anything in the kingdom, the currency is faith. The language of the kingdom is faith. So what is it that God is calling you to, uh, to do, right? As a demonstration of faith, and it may not even be the giving up of something. He may just be calling you to, to, to just do something, right? Whatever it is that he's calling you to do. And you have been asking him for 12 years, for 12 years, and you may not even been asking him, but for 12 years, you have been seeking answers to a situation. You have been seeking resolution for a situation. And some years ago, God said to you, this, de this demonstration of faith, do this. And you have not done it. You have been rendered mute ineffective in the kingdom of God because your actions are not reflecting your profession of faith. We praise God, intercessor, for the confirmation, right? So I want to encourage you to examine areas in your life where your actions don't align with your profession of faith. Be honest. And then take some actionable steps. Go back to whatever the Lord told you to do. Because I'm sure he said something. When you asked him a question, he answered you. Now, whether you whether you stood around for the answer or whether you heard the answer and just, you know, shrugged it off. I don't know. But go back there and take actionable steps to bring those deeds in line with your beliefs. Bring Just bring your deeds, period, in line with your beliefs. Do not allow the enemy to influence you 
And I have to say influence because we can't put it all on the enemy because he just gives you a thought or, you know, he just influences you. And at the end of the day, it is your decision. What language are you going to receive and speak? Are you in alignment with the language of the kingdom of God or are you in alignment with the language of the kingdom of Satan? Now let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans is after the book of Acts in the New Testament. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. All right, it says, so faith, I was, trying, I was quoting the scripture, not verbatim, but I was quoting the scripture earlier. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Yahusha. So faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God is what it may say in another translation. Hey, Trina, good to see you. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Yahusha, right? I'm, I'm now transitioning into making this point because we've talked about um, our speech as an expression of faith, also our actions as an expression of faith. Faith begins with hearing the word of God, okay? But it must be both spoken and acted upon in order for it to be fully realized. If we do not speak and live by faith, we are spiritually mute. We are unable to participate fully in the kingdom. You cannot carry, you cannot have an expectation of God to answer your prayers or to bring about whatever it is that you want to bring about when you're not even speaking his language. Another way that we can speak the language of God, and I'm, I'm, I mentioned this earlier, is about sharing our testimony. It is a powerful expression of faith and it should never be muted. There are too many of us, okay? Some of us out here, we've gotten great at doing it, right? But there are way many, 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 many more of us that are not sharing our testimony. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. Listen, sharing your testimony not only strengthens your own faith, but it also inspires and increases the faith of others. Now, what are we called to do in the kingdom? We are called to make disciples. We are called to produce, to multiply, and to dominate. And so how do you do that? Faith, again, is the currency. When you are sharing what God has done in your life, you are breaking the power of the enemy over you, okay, because he seeks to silence you. And you are also breaking the power over the in of the enemy over someone else who may be going through the same thing and being silenced by the enemy in the same way. We do not want to be lost in translation. There is nothing like saying you're from a certain kingdom, but you cannot speak the language. Listen, I have to talk about myself here just in the natural for a moment, right? Both of my parents are from Honduras, which makes me full-blooded, whatever, <laughs> this is the thing. I'm all these labels and things right now, okay? I'm going some, anyway, let me get back to the example. Which makes me, Hispanic is the label that would be given. My parents, though, they did not teach me the language of the home country. They wanted me to speak the language of this country. 
And so I have to learn my native language. Y'all, I, I hope y'all are getting the revelation. I had to, I had to relearn, not only really relearn, I had to learn anew the language of my native kingdom. And to this day, I don't uh, speak it that effectively. And if I go to Honduras, while I can understand it, communicating, I don't speak it as effectively. And so therefore, I'm unable to communicate. I'm unable to participate fully. I am, in a sense, rendered mute in some way in my native kingdom. We are born in sin. We are born in this world. We, 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 we come from the kingdom of God. We are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And so we have learned the language of this world. We have learned the language of the kingdom of Satan. And now we have to learn anew the language of the kingdom. And so how much energy are we going to put into learning the language of the kingdom? Are you going to immerse yourself in the language so that you can learn to effectively understand it and speak it fluently? Now, you guys know me and we're coming up on our time. You know that I love to give practical steps, right? Because after all, we're here. We're not just about winning souls. We're about making disciples. And so becoming a disciple of God, being a disciple of Yahusha means that there are practical steps that you're also taking. That it, it, It's not just our speech, but it is also our actions, right? And so I want to give you some very practical steps. to help you become more fluent in the language of the kingdom, which is faith. So number one, please write these down. If you wrote nothing this whole entire time, I, I, I at least hope you wrote the scriptures down so you can go back and read it. But if you wrote nothing this entire time, write this down. Number one, engage regularly with the word of God to build your faith. You cannot build your faith if you are not engaging with the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, what? And hearing by the word of God. That's number one. Number two, practice speaking faith-filled words daily in your life. Now listen, number two, you can't even accomplish number two without accomplishing number one. So if you're not doing number one, which is regularly engaging with the word of God, how can you expect to even speak the words? Right? So number one, engage with the word of God regularly. Number two, practice speaking faith-filled words in your life. Speak the scriptures. Pray the scriptures. Right? Number three, share your testimony whenever possible. Proclaim God's goodness in your life so that you can encourage others, right? Don't let the enemy mute your voice. Don't let the enemy strip your ability to be effective in the kingdom of God. Don't let the enemy mute you in the kingdom of God. Your testimony is a vital part of living the language of faith. And number four, align your actions with the faith that you profess. You want to ensure that your life speaks the language of the kingdom, not just your words, but your actions. And in fact, your actions may be even more powerful sometimes than your words. What people see you doing 
is sometimes even more powerful than what they hear you saying. None of these can be done without number one, engaging in the word regularly, right? So in one, engage in the word regularly. Two, practice speaking faith-filled words daily. Three, share your testimony whenever possible. And four, align your actions with the faith that you profess. Now, I want to give you a final scripture and we're going to get out of here. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. Go to Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. All right. Child, I'm in denial. I'm going to give me a, a, a bigger, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? It's a large print. All right. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Absolutely, intercessor. Great principles to practice every day. And we want to assure that we can, we're effectively communicating in the kingdom. Follow those principles, okay? Verse, um, so number seven, let me read it again. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. For we live by believing and not seeing, okay? Faith is not about what we can see, but it is the evidence, <laughs> the substance of the things that we hope for. It is the currency that is going to allow for the manifestation of the things that we hope for, right? Faith is the official language of the kingdom. It's not about the dialect that you speak. Um, it is not about, uh, it, it's not a language that is specific to any region or specific to a social group because we can even have language that's amongst the social group. You can have language that's even amongst you and your siblings, right? Like nobody else can understand it. You guys have a special way of communicating, right? We have all of these different groups that we can fall into. But in the kingdom, the language of faith transcends all of that. Faith can be spoken in any language. It can be spoken in any dialect. And without it, without faith, that is, we are spiritually mute. We are unable to communicate effectively within the kingdom. And so I leave you with these questions. Are you truly living as a kingdom citizen if you are not fluent in the language? Are you fluent in the language? How does your faith... <laughs> or the lack thereof, affect your ability to communicate and operate in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you. First of all, confessing, Father God, that we have not been in our word like we should. We have not spent the time necessary so that we can become fluent in faith. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to speak and to live a life of faith daily, O oh Lord. We thank you for what our ears have heard today. We thank you for what our eyes have seen in your holy book, O oh Lord. And now help us not only to have heard it and seen it, but now help us to go out and be doers of your word, O oh Lord. This is our prayer. In the name of Yahusha, we pray. Listen, it is my desire that you are not lost in translation. After listening to this, I want you to take a moment to reflect on how you can more effectively communicate your faith through your words, and through your actions in this coming week. You're welcome, uh, Intercessor Mims. All right, so that's it, y'all. That's all that I have. Um, let's get on out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. God bless you.
God keep you and um, keep fighting the good fight of faith.